This is Real Women, celebrating women in independent film. My name is Brenda Daly. I'm an actor, writer, creator, and we are at the Action Shot Studios. And I am here with director, cinematographer, writer, Michael Conway. How are you, Mike? Hi, Brenda. Good to be here. Yeah, so excited to have you here. Um, I know you and I are both part of the Lucky 7 Film Challenge. Yes. There were only, we entered this challenge and it was about... They had gotten seven directors together, and the reason why I got in is because you recommended me, which I really appreciate, um, but they had seven directors, and they were going to make seven feature films, and in basically seven months, for right. $7,000. Right, right. Right, right. So, but me and you and uh, Dale, Dale. Dale Nevins are, were the only remaining We're the three. survivors. We this are. Is, we... This is a lucky seven <laughs> survivor island. I swear, they need to put this on TV because that was like, if they, I would, they would have really done their. We, we voted everybody off. And, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. And there then, could be only one. <laughs> but in our case, there could be only three. <laughs> no, but, it, but I really do appreciate you uh, recommending me, kind of. No, I'm fine. <laughs> no, it was really a challenge, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't really think, like, I thought, oh, I actually get to make a movie and I get some money. That's right, sweet. Right. In, in my case, I probably shouldn't have accepted the challenge because <laughs> because I was in the middle of another movie, as you know, right. like Evil Dwells Within. Right. And and um, juggling two. You, no, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with me, I was I'm still doing the Mom Squad, and I just raised the money for that. Yeah. So you know, I have an obligation to those people that I took the money from, right? And then I had to put that aside because I tried to do two, and it was like, yeah, no. And uh, to anybody from Evil Dwells Within, I'll be getting back to it very shortly. Yeah. I'm sorry for the intermission. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but let's get back to so the movie that you made was called Drone Down, mm -hmm. and so can you tell our audience what it was about? It's a Bigfoot movie. It's uh. Basically, um, uh, two rangers are going out to recover a drone because uh, they were kind of idiots and crashed it. And <laughs> so one guy brings his girlfriend, who is not supposed to be there, but she's having some personal problems. And he thinks getting out in the woods would be great. So <laughs> the other guy's like, what the heck? And he goes along with it. But they end up shooting a Bigfoot and then getting attacked by the tribe. Oh, okay. So that sounds weird. So... I feel like it's kind of in that vein of like Lake Placid from when I auditioned for it. Oh, I love Lake Placid. Yeah, but doesn't it? It kind of felt like that, even that yes. one little scene. It it it, it turned into that. Um, I was going to be totally serious with this film. You know, it's like, oh, it's going to be hardcore, <laughs> the Bigfoot stomping heads, and that's not there. But but it was going to be like really intense and. Uh -huh. Uh, I got Michael Kearney because I, I was involved with Evil Dwells Within. I'm like, and he asked uh, Robert, the producer of that movie, he's like, do you think Mike would let me write his script? Oh, you know, okay. I had the okay. story. And, uh -huh. and, and uh, Robert told me that. And I was like, you know what? Maybe that's a good idea with everything I'm taking on. You know, uh -huh. take uh -huh. some help. And this yeah. guy wants to do it. Right. And it's, as it turns out, Michael Kearney is brilliant. Yeah. So, uh but I didn't know him other than as an actor from Evil Dwells Within. So uh -huh. we talked and I said, look, this is the way it goes. I get final say in the script. Um, here's the story. Uh -huh. Take that. And and uh, I was trying to convey the tone. But Michael, um, he put in a lot of humor to it, which at first I was like, oh, no. But I, I absolutely love it. Now. I, I really... And the, the Lake Placid thing, that's a perfect I, I really like when I auditioned, I was like, this is like... I was there. I, I know why you cast your wife because I know she's a great actress. I saw her in Bug. But I was I like, I didn't have to oh. pay her either. So what? Well, you, there you her. go. But I just felt like, God, this is that late placid moment. You know? Yeah, it like, really turns. It's That's a very good comparison. Yeah, yeah. So when you go to pitch it for distribution, I would definitely do that because I really felt like it, it was super fun. And I think... You know, you can make a scary black uh, Bigfoot movie, but I think because we're in an independent situation and we don't have, we didn't have the money to buy name actors. Oh, yeah. I feel like the humor is actually going to sell it to yeah. the distribution yeah. companies because you know, and and it so it's kind of a horror, but it's also a comedy. Yes, and and uh, it doesn't always work unless you can feel it with the characters and, and uh, the actors that are in this, they, they made that material work. Oh and, yeah. And Michael's yeah. writing, like I said, it's, he's brilliant. 
Right. So Vegas out there, in L.A., whatever, if you're looking for a script writer and it's got to add a little comedy to your humor, you, Michael Tierney. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. That's awesome. So how did you, how did it go? Like, was it smooth sailing? It, <laughs> so um, <laughs> there were just, uh, there were two of us on crew, myself and Matt Collins, and Matt was sound and I was filming. Uh-huh. And then uh, uh, Ben Stober came in to do uh, a couple days of yeah. assistant director. Yeah. So that, that helped a lot. Ben? I, I'm telling you, Ben was like invaluable on set. Like he just did whatever. Yes, yes, yeah. He brought us food and water and, mm-hmm. and just what? What do you need? What do you need? So, uh, Ben, you're great. Yeah, we love you, Ben. But go ahead. <laughs> so, um, but Matt, my my uh, sound man and co cameraman, he just did a, a short movie. When I say short, like 45 minutes, called oh, Wild okay. Game, and they okay. shot in Mount Charleston. Uh-huh. He said it rained on him like every day. The wind. They got a blizzard in June. Oh wow! Uh-huh, <laughs> a snow uh-huh. blizzard. They were like, "You're kidding!" So um, he did that movie for Philip Tricky, and then uh, Philip goes, "Hey, Matt." How did drone down go? He says, not one day did it rain. We had no. rain and we had wind and we had every day. Because you were also problem. June, right? May, June? Uh, we May? were like July, end of June, but I guess it's monsoon season, which yeah, I didn't know. Yes. And so we had a lot of rain. It was, I was super cold. That was my biggest worry was monsoons, which usually come later summer, right? Mm-hmm. And, I, and I thought mm-hmm. August, oh no. Right. And Dale took the August spot. So I was like... I mean, you know, the early August, so I had the uh, second half of August, and I was like, oh, I hope it's not monsooning. And it it was sunny every day. So, oh, wow. Yeah. So the, the filming was actually, um, weather-wise, it was, it was smooth sailing. Um, we did have, you know, obviously we were filming during COVID Delta. Yeah. Now it's Omicron. I'm Omicron Prime. I Am I an Autobot or a Decepticon? <laughs> you know, but uh, I, think, I think he's a Decepticon now. But the- yeah, I feel like, uh, so I know with me, it, it took me like, uh, we, we had like a 16 hour day. And so, uh, because I, I had, even though they're Vegas based actors, they do a lot of stuff in LA. So they always had to go back and forth. And when was in Utah and I was like, this is nuts. Like right. that was, that was a little bit of a, but the actors were so good. Oh, this is kind of funny because. Uh, Brenda, I had I had some actors picked out for Drone Down, including Jackie Gearhardy as the sheriff, and uh, she's amazing. Timothy yeah. Hanlon, and and uh, and you know even Bella was picked for Joe's project. But uh, so um, I know who you're talking about because I had to pick them originally, a couple of them, uh-huh, and uh-huh. Uh, but it worked out because you taking Jackie, uh, I love Jackie, but yes. my wife. And you were also a strong candidate. I love you. I appreciate reading. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Next movie. Brenda <laughs> read for the sheriff. And, and you even had the radio sounds in there. And it was hilarious. I was like, this is such a hard choice. There were three people. Because uh, uh, two women, you and Sheila. And then um, uh, the guy, Robert Sattler. Uh-huh. And he was very good. And uh, But... Uh, I asked how his legs were because there'd be a lot of running and screaming going on. He's like, like, oh, no, running. I was like, okay, well, all right. He's going to be second sheriff at the end of the movie. Yeah, 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 Um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But um, Sheila only, she like made a comment like, oh, hmm, I could, you know, I could maybe help you with that. And I was like, I didn't think you had the time. Right. She's a full-time chef. She works at a bakery. Okay, and in fact, okay. uh, she works off Sky Canyon. Too. Oh, she does. So, so, Hi, Sheila. <laughs> so I knew how to find this place. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I didn't think she was actually a possibility. And your reading was so good. And you know what, Sattler though? If it was, was so me, good. I would have done the same thing because I, no, like I said. No, I no, have... no. It wasn't. It actually wasn't nepotism. Uh, I mean, you know. I, I, I know mean, she's a great actress. I mean, for me, that would be the, I mean, for me, it'd be different if she couldn't act. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I said uh, to Robert and Donna, who were also helping me uh-huh. with casting, Robert Krauss and Donna Fisher. Right. And, and we love you guys. Donna's yeah. the one who suggested Tom Fisco, who's our Bigfoot hunter. So uh-huh. Uh-huh. that was really great, Donna. Yeah. But, but uh, I said, look, I don't want to play like, because I'm married to Sheila, that's why I would pick her. So I, I need your opinions. Watch the interviews. And uh, there, there was... It was three winners, no matter who I no, went I know, with. No, I know, no, no. I did have Tom Fisco originally as one of my leads, and yeah. then he he backed out on but, me. He didn't like because, the content. He didn't like the content. 
Oh, true, right, right. Yeah, he was like, he called me up and he was like, yeah, I, I, I don't think I do it. I think I'm not the right Wasn't he one. like a rapist or something? Like um, it's abuser. A, a, he was an abusive father. But he so, felt like he was too young. Right. But I think I think he I still think he's a great actor. Uh, and I get why his reservations and Alan Woodman did it. And Alan really did a really I good was job. surprised when Alan got on there that you know, because he's a stunt coordinator. Right. And to see him playing a part, I mean, that's pretty awesome. So I can't wait to see your movie. He actually did a really good job. So he looked good in the pics. Yeah, and- yeah, yeah. I mean, he, you know, he's I'm not an actor, I'm a stunt person, but he did a really good job. And he was in Battlestar Galactica. Did you know that? No. He was totally... Like the original? Yeah. Oh, wow. Starbuck, Apollo, <laughs> Adama. Yeah, that's Hey, right. watch your language. That's right. That's but, uh, right. But yeah, so he was... So he was a really good choice. And um, and yeah, I just... I, I actually, when I wrote it, I kind of thought of Alan. But then Tom's audition was like... He was so creepy. Yeah. And so good. He's such a good actor yeah, yeah, yeah. that I was like... I mean, I, because Alan didn't audition. Oh, okay. So I, I was Alan, like. Alan said, frack this. Frack and, this. I don't audition. I'm a set coordinator. But then, and, you know, I, I, you know, we all, everybody has reasons not doing things. Mm-hmm. And I think even when he did the audition, he did a great audition. He played a creepy, creepy yeah. audition. I, it was probably the best audition out of all of them. But I, but I get it. You know, it, mm-hmm. some people don't want to associate themselves with certain. Right, content. right, right, right. And like, I only do comedy. Well, and here's the other thing, too, is I had an entire script written, but I hated it. And I didn't want to go back and write another one. I was practically crying. My husband goes, you don't want to write the script. He you, was you, like, get you, your ass up there and read it. So You I, hated your script? I did. And so I, I when, when, when even though we had cast some of the parts, I literally had to restart over. So when we had our table read, because, you know, I was first to go and I was scheduled to go and I hate not being on time. Mm-hmm. So... I was only three weeks in the script. So, of course, we had a lot of errors in it. So, he was, probably didn't have a lot of confidence in me as a director at that point, which I get. Like, I get No, it. I think it was mostly the part that he had to play. Oh, really? He, yeah. It's a know, great part. This might hurt my image or, or bolster it. You know, I've known people done bad stuff like at work and they get a commendation. I know, I know. You're but like, but you're I like, do oh love... gosh, they pulled Larry into the office. Well, but I do love you, Tom. Out. Yeah, I do love you, Tom Fisco. And if I ever get a role that's not a creepy dad, you're the guy. <laughs> I mean, that's just you know. But how? So how did the filming go? Like, I you had great weather. We had great weather. Uh, the actors were great. I um, I tried to make these pretty easy days as far as they were just daytime except for there was um two nights one with abby and drew van pearson where it was at their house Uh she's having a nightmare Mm -hmm. but the other night was actually in the woods and here we were in august and people were putting their sweaters on oh it was cold yeah it was it's unreal everybody's talking about the heat waves and i'm like this is why you film in the forest in summer but um that last night that was the last night of shooting and it it was really good. So, it, but but the problems, like if we did have some things like the costume early on, it was uh, we were having trouble getting the face done on uh-huh, time. So uh-huh. the first few days we're shooting without the face, but then when it eventually came together, it came together. So uh-huh. it, it all uh, worked out in the end. So yeah, I'm super excited to see it. Um, you're so you're being shown on Saturday or Sunday, the 27th of February at yeah. six o'clock. Yes, right. So. Yeah, that super fun. Um, I can't wait to see it. Um, I'm not really sure. I feel like they wish it would. Because at first when Ben was telling me, he goes, yeah, pick two times. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm thinking he's going to let us show two days. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking that too. And then he did. Then he's like, no. So, and I was like. But put I, me down for every time slot. <laughs> no, but I mean, no, two times would have been cool. Because Dale actually asked for a six on Saturday. And he says, do you want, what are your choices? I said, well. I do like the later shows on each day, and, I, and I'm pretty sure Brenda would too. So whichever one she doesn't take, I'll you know I'll take the other. Right, right, right. I don't I don't care if it's Saturday or Sunday. They're both I don't care good. either. So Sunday I, I think too. A but, but Dale taking the six. No, I took made the six. It, oh, you took the six? Yeah. So Dale's at eight. Uh huh. Oh, that's so funny. Maybe that was his second choice. I have no idea. I just told, okay, I think they asked me first because I'm the girl because Ben's very, you know, proper. There, there's not a bad time. In no, that bunch, there, this, so. uh, there's a six, there's a six and eight. 
Um, I'm having problems because I had so many people from our community just donate time and I promised them all tickets and Jeremy's like, yeah, whatever you need to do, just do it, just do it. And so I have 120 going in the 150 oh, theater. Wow. And so I'm kind of concerned about I that. I hope they don't bring their spouses. <laughs> well, no, because they said everybody could bring somebody. Okay. So I'm not really So that's sure. basically 60 and the plus one. Right. It's 60. Yeah. So it's 60 plus one. So that's been an issue. I'm hoping they get a bigger theater. I think there's a 200 seat theater. That would they be did awesome death, to have the big camp. theater. Yeah. Because I've got a lot. I didn't know. But, you know, I'm doing the count. And I'm going, uh-oh, 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 right, uh-oh. Right. <laughs> yeah. You almost need two screenings. You know? I do. Because then I could have had people come on Sunday. Mm -hmm. But, like, I'm not really sure what the format is. So expect a fantastic weekend. I think it'll be super fun. And I know that when I went to the Death Count premiere, uh, it was full. Mm. So I'm thinking, what's three films going to do? Right, Plus, right. I guess they're going to add a couple of earlier times. I'm not really sure what the format is. So uh, stay tuned for that. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, but yeah, so uh, what else about the film that you need everybody so, to know? So uh, back to the costume, Michael Baran, he's one of the producers. And when I was talking to him, I didn't know he was a producer because Benson talks to this guy because he's got animals. And I was thinking, oh, maybe I could have a raccoon for a shot. What I wanted was the bear. And right. I had to go digital. You saw, you see the bear in the trailer. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I did buy the bear. Stock. Oh, okay. But I thought it would be cool if someone had access to a real bear. And I, I know there's that Lady uh, Susan Atkins Kehoe, she has bears. Yeah, but, but she's in Jersey. Yeah, she's in Jersey, exactly. And I I kind of wanted to have something that I could really work with as opposed to here's some home movie of a bear. You know what I mean? I no, I to... totally get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, because we were only so supposed to film So I bought the alpha and channeled bear. Yeah, so we, yeah, so as filmmakers, we were only really supposed to be filming in uh, Las Vegas because it was a Las Vegas, Nevada challenge. Yeah. Or it could be in Nevada. So that's so that's where right. the whole bear thing is. Like I mean, if Michael Brand would have done, he would have had to ship in a so bear. <laughs> I was talking to Michael Brand about animals, and then uh, you know, so what's your Bigfoot movie about? And he goes, he says, actually, I have one question: How many times is Bigfoot seen in the film? I said, uh -huh. a lot. <laughs> you know, like he's killing everybody. Right, like, right, lot. right. And he's like, I want to be Bigfoot. Yeah, and I was like. Are you serious? And I go, how tall are you? He's like six one. I said, well, he says, but I've got drywall stilts and I'm really good on them. And I'm like, mm hmm. And I was talking to a makeup girl for uh, Evil Dwells Within. She's like, no stilts, no stilts. You know, it's like too many accidents can happen. And and then uh, I said, Michael, uh, um, some makeup <laughs> people have concerns about your stilts and <laughs> you hurting yourself or falling on people. Right, and, right, right. But we ended up doing the stilts. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joanna Heckman did the Bigfoot outfit. So um, he did an awesome job. But but the main thing that happened in what he realized, you know, it's still summer, even though we're up in the mountain, we're shooting in the daytime. Right. He probably lost a lot of weight it, in that costume. Like I said, the night was cold, <laughs> but the day was still warm. So uh -huh. he said to me after the first day, he says, um, I can only do three or four hours in that suit. And I was like, you know, I was wondering about that, you know? Yeah. So yes, he lost some pounds. And, and uh, so basically I did kind of, instead of doing a whole day of Bigfoot, I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, we're going to do three hours of Bigfoot on this day, three hours on this day. Right. And, and just spread out Bigfoot and then do other scenes. Right. And I don't know if anybody knows anything about Michael Brand, but he actually has his own um, show on, mm -hmm. I think it's Animal Planet and Discovery. The Bear Hands Rescue. Bear Hands Rescue, yeah. Uh, Animal Planet, yeah. Animal Planet, so yeah. So he's a really great guy. He was actually executive producer on ours. He he was basically, he would hold lights. He did anything on set. Yes. Like he was oh, great. He, was, he came he was up. incredible. Yeah, really nice guy. So hi, Michael. Um, but uh, anything else you want to tell him that anything that went awry for you? Um, it, it, it went well. Um, you had a much, you had the smallest crew. Yeah. Yeah, just I wanted to move fast and and um, you know light and fast. So how and many how many days did you shoot? We shot it was um well we didn't keep it within the seven I think we did eight or nine. Yeah, we did so. ten, but they said seven they said seven to ten. So but we had to do it because we had to do some pickups. And I was like, you know what, it, you know if there's like prizes based on the time, it's like I'd rather have the movie done right than 
you know, adhere to a right, yeah, you know, we, yeah. a contest limit, you know. So, so yeah, I'm, like, I'm going to break. Was, I'll just break the rules. And well, and that was the I other thing too. I think we all too. did, though. Well, I think that this is the deal is, you know, this was their first year. So it wasn't just our challenge, but it was also Jeremy Settles and Ben Stober's challenge because there were a lot of challenges that none of us expected. And so all five of us are kind of in that, oh, it was a challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think they kind of knew it, but we were kind of a little more like, oh, my God. Yeah. The first year they're, they're trying to figure it out, for instance, we didn't know that we could only use actors in one film and not the others, you know? Right. So, they, so that's why all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, so I lost Jackie, I lost Tim, I right. lost Bella. Right. You know, but then uh, Joe Lujan... Backed out. He backed out, and then Bella came back to me. And I was like, oh, shoot, I've already got someone in the spot. Mm-hmm. And then, But then the other person fell out. Right. So I put Bella in. And so this was my uh, COVID, my Delta story. Uh-huh. So... Bella was coming in. Um, Abby Ray is my lead. Yes, love Abby. Um, she was fantastic and one of the best people I've ever worked with. She was just totally cooperative and, uh-huh. and there, uh-huh. and, you know, uh-huh. committed. Yes. Um, but Abby had some family issues with COVID, and, mm. and uh, I'm like, I was getting scared. And one of the girls that read for um, the uh, EMT. We had, we had uh, the woman sheriff, the EMT, and our lead. Uh-huh. And um, so Noha Amur, she read for both uh, Abby the EMT, not Abby. Right, right, right. right. But it, it, and that was so confusing, naming the EMT Abby. Right, right. Michael, that's on you. Um, <laughs> but um, so she read for Dr. Nia Parks, the lead, and Abby the EMT. And I was like, that's too bad. She, she had a really good read. A lot of people had good readings. I wanted, you know, it's like, it's a shame that you have to not use. Well, I think there's people. a lot of talent in, in the Valley that people yeah, that and it's do not, not that they couldn't do it. Right. They could do it. But I, but I picked the people who I, you know, nailed the reading the best. Of course, and, yes. and so obviously you're, you're trying to be professional about it. But then I said to Noha, cause I was thinking with, with Delta going on, I said, Noha, could you help out with, um, food and and just be a crew person and you know i'll pay you to come out and she's like sure and and this is like kind of late notice but it was after abby was talking about this covid thing in her family and um it it was i I don't want to go into it but it was like a serious thing and um so we got the rapid tests and i said look um take a rapid test you know, she was worried. I said, you're vaccinated, aren't you? And, and it's funny. It's like, we, we all thought we were all vaccinated, but then it's like, then you find out from people, well, no, I'm not vaccinated. It's like, what? <laughs> but, um, so, uh, I'm like, I'm going to have Noha as, as just on crew. Mm-hmm. And if there's an issue, she can back up. Well, Bella came in from California. We shot the first day at the offices where the sheriff gathers the expedition together. Okay. Okay. So everybody's in that scene. And um, the next day, Bella comes to set and she's, you know, the eyes water, the sniffles and the cough. And I'm like, oh, no. And when I say came to set, she came to my house, you know, not, you know. Right. Not not, not standing near everybody. But she's like, Mike, I got I got the symptoms. I'm like, shoot. And I'm like, and this is Noha's first day as a set person. I'm like, Noha, can you play the EMT? Okay, sure. I was like, all right. Um. Uh, I said to Bella, I said, can we take your eyeglasses? No, those are my prescription glasses. I said, okay, well, I took a picture of her. And then uh, we run to, you know, Walmart and a few places. And it's like, okay, this pair of glasses looks close. All right, the white, you know, that the outfit I actually bought, Bella. So mm-hmm. she gave us that. We washed it and then put Noha in it. And Noha had um, long, dark hair like Bella. So it's uh-huh. like, put your bare uh, uh, hair in a ponytail just like Bella's, you know, it's like, and so had you filmed Bella already? Yes. Oh. And they're both they're both in scenes together. I mean, what I mean is, um, to Mia Dow goes, let me bring the EMT in. She ushers in Bella, and as she turns the corner, it cuts. It's, and oh. then it's Noha. So it now actually look for that. And then when the sheriff is talking and the camera's behind the three people, it's it's Bella. But when it's a close-up, it's Noha from the front. So, oh, that's kind of cool. So, though. in the movie, both get credit. yeah, that's yeah, they nice. both get credit. There's Abby and Abby B. <laughs> so, um, 
Uh, for instance, it's Bella getting in and out of the sheriff's vehicle. Oh, okay. But Noha, you know, so... Oh, they, so, did that, they did that with Abigail. They had the, the girl who played Abigail, the ghost. Another some Abigail. Days, uh, right, but, but what they did was they had... It was actually a guy, and they put him in the in the in the gown, the nightgown, where they're supposed to be the ghost. On oh, the was that day, the Kelly that Schwartz? Was, yeah, the, on the day. So it was one of his producers actually was putting it in the background when they were filming me. They actually it was the guy. It wasn't her. They had a little wig, and oh, wow. so they had stand in on on days for the ghost. Interesting. So so yeah. So I, I think I think too. I, for me, with the challenge is that it's. Um, it was a challenge and we had a time limit and I wouldn't recommend anybody really, I mean, I would recommend them just try it if they get the opportunity, but I think if you can do a challenge like that, you can pretty much figure out anything. Right. And, 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 uh, you know, I've done 48 hour film a number of years and you've done it. Of course. I've that, done that, them, That's yeah. where I saw I you did. and started talking to you. Right. And the thing about the 48 hour for me is that I'm just, um, I need time and space to write it. And mm-hmm. that was, so I didn't think my projects turned out that great for the 48, but, but at this, I at least had some time to write. Right, but, but it, it's a challenge to do that kind of, you know, contest where it's more totally time-based like that. Totally And you've time-based. got limited resources. Mm-hmm. And so I was looking at um, the Lucky Sevens as it's kind of like a, a bigger version of 48. But I don't see it that way at all. I, I mean, but that's but I'm saying that's what kind of uh, alerted me, you know, to doing it. Right. And, and, and I was thinking, well, if I do this quickie project and then get back to Evil Dwells Within, but here I still am on the yeah, quickie project. Right. And the thing too is that uh, I think a feature film is just it's a it's it's a you have to take it seriously because it's a different it's a, it is and you have to, and you, it's time consuming and you have to work really hard to make sure that all the little nuances are important because you know the plan was to get them distribution 48 hour films don't really get distribution mm-hmm. these will so i think that that's why you have it's it's its own, it's its own everything animal. is higher stakes yes it's very higher stakes so so is there anything else that you would like to tell me first of all let me ask you this what woman in film inspired you to become a filmmaker or that maybe an actress you've seen? Well, uh, oh, as far as actresses, I was always, uh, you know, growing up on Terminator and Aliens, you know, it was Ripley and Sarah Connor. Oh, me, yeah, so. for sure. But interesting, as far as right now, my, my wife has been involved with that's a, a lot of one. my filmmaking. So, you know, and Ben's like, that's that's the big story about you as you and your wife. So what happened is, Sheila and I worked on a lot of the 48s and shorts mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and she was in a couple of, of features that I got distributed. And uh-huh. so, and everybody was like, she's great. I said, I know, she but she, she doesn't aspire to be an actress. She's a chef, but she does it to help me and she enjoys it. So she totally enjoys it. But, well, she's creative. But it's, but it's not her goal. But, yes. I, but I think too, uh, when you're a creative person, you're kind of all around creative. So yeah. that's probably why she was so good at it. So anyways, the last 10 years, we kind of, um, you know, after the recession of like, oh, nine, you know, when it, it kind of got rough, we, we went through bankruptcy and was like, OK, I'm not going to be uh, financing my, you know, uh, using my, um, oh, uh, my equity to fund films. Right, you know, like, right. we're going to leave the house alone now. We're going to leave the credit cards alone and not fund these films. So for like 10 years, I didn't make a feature and Sheila and I didn't really do too much so this came along and then when she actually expressed some interest i didn't think she'd even be available you know mentally right, 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 and right. with her work right. schedule of course of course and and when she even hinted at that it was like a little light bulb you I, know i'm like i know i, I do have to tell you that is. even if your spouse isn't like a filmmaker or into it because my mine's not um he was the one person that even though I had people pitching ideas at me and I was writing as I was going, it was like he was the one person that I would have to sit down and he would help me steer or fix the problems. Mm-hmm. He's a good problem fixer. So, you know, thank you, Tom. I love you, honey. But he would literally like, okay, calm down. He goes, let's just talk it out. Yes. Because I think when you're a filmmaker, whether or not they're involved, they're involved. Yes. Whether they want yes. to be. And, and what you said, it, it's also true of us. Because uh-huh. uh, everything I do, every script 
ID or whatever, I run by Sheila. And she, she's just got well, a She's great, your best friend. and you, But she's got a really good head on her shoulders. And like you said, she's very creative and smart. Right. So and, they, and, you know, sometimes you get stuck in the problem. And, yeah. and it's, you know, you go to the one person that you trust most in the world, which yep. is your spouse. And you say, hey, what do you think? Because, you know, they're going to tell you. Yeah. You know, if they don't, my husband does not hold back. He'll say, no, that sucks. Or, or, you know, oh, that's a really good idea. Or what about this idea? Yeah. So he'll tell everybody, my husband's going to tell everybody he wrote the script, by the way. But he did help write a lot of it, for sure, for sure. Right, right. He had one line, so he gets his name. No, no, no he didn't have a line, but I'm just saying he really did do a lot. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, and and I, it would not be the story that it is, uh, for sure. But, well, I'm super excited that we talked about this. Yeah. Is there anything else you want anybody to say? Because um, this is your moment. Well, I, I brought a scene, so... Um, You'll probably cut to that at whenever. Yeah, but. we're going to uh, show the scene at the very end. Uh, like okay. I did Deborah Richards, we put her director she, reel on the end there. Sheila plays the sheriff, um, but it, it's a good cast scene. You, you see Abby, Noah. Uh, you know what was really good was Raph. Raph is and, good. And, and He's Raph, got grown so much as an actor, and he is really good. And, and uh, you know, there's there's uh, always those uh, people who are like so-called prominent, pro- prominent, and they, they're like, oh, you have him for an actor? It's like, yeah. And wait till you see the movie. Well, he <laughs> looks... He steals. I mean... But he... You know what? I think with Ra- Ralph when he started, because he has not been acting that long. A couple right, of years. But he steals and he's been, this. Right. But he literally has worked so hard and I've actually watched him grow. And he when he auditioned for uh, my movie, I would have picked him like... His audition, we were like, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And then we saw Tom Fisco's. But I had already had him cast and I felt like... I would have picked him as the dad, but he doesn't look like Jackie and Sheila's dad. Right, right. Sheila Krause's dad. So I think the audience w- would have looked at it like, okay, it wasn't believable. Yeah. So I was kind of concerned about that. But I did cast him. He is in the movie. Uh, but but I loved his audition. Like, he's he's grown so much that I'm just super proud of you, Ralph. And I think uh, that he's got so much more coming yes, up. Yes, yes. And, and when you see him in this movie... You're gonna realize what what glue he is because he he plays the you know the guy's kind of the asshole. And the, can I say that on this? Yes, you can. Uh, so so, but <laughs> it's but he does such a good job. Yeah, no, and, I I really think that he's he was definitely and it, a good. It guest. elevated everybody. So, oh, for uh, sure, for sure. I think he's in all two of the three films, but he was cast in other uh, movie yeah, cast in other ones, but then they didn't make it to the right, movie. right. But this one, he was more of a featured part, so he he was. Uh, he said he had to take smaller parts in the other ones. So. Yeah, he did. I don't know if that's going to be a rule next year. I think with the Lucky Sevens, they're going to probably modify it. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I always told him it should be $7,000 seven months, right? There you go. And then seven crew members, and then that way you don't have a time slot. Because yeah. I felt like that was kind of like, <gasps> for yeah. me, it was like, oh, my God. Okay, well, this has been super fun, Mike. Um, and, uh, so, uh, this, we've been talking to Mike Conway. This is Real Women Celebrating Women in Independent Film at Action Shot Studios. And, uh, I'm sure we're going to talk again after the premieres. Thanks, Mike. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye. Bye.